Exactement. Transformation Network's morning prayer. I am your host, Coach Shaitiria Jones, your spiritual midwife, helping you to see you as Jesus Christ sees you. Here at Kingdom Transformation, we are the bridge that connects identity, purpose, and destiny. Because when you know who you are, you can passionately pursue purpose. And when you passionately pursue purpose, you can occupy the place called destiny. Here at Kingdom Transformation, self-care is soul care. When you take care of the depths of your soul, you live the quality of life that Jesus Christ died for you to live. Your soul is a treasure, and oftentimes we don't treat it as such. Uh, when we see our soul as a treasure, we will take much care and concern with it, understanding that when the fall happened, it became fragile and broken when when we enter into certain experiences trauma pain all of it fragments our soul or injures it or wounds it in some way and so we have to enter into the place where we allow god himself to be the restorer of our soul to bring us back to the very state that we were intended to be and that takes intentionality on our part that takes us partnering with god in a new way and beginning to believe him <clears throat> concerning what it is that he says about us and what he says he means and so here at Kingdom Transformation, I help you to do that. And we have to be a people who are actively engaging, right? So when, um, you know, we have a series that you're going through and you're um, doing the work, we're listening to it and really uh, putting the things into practice in order to see the results that Jesus Christ died for you to see. We are in a series um, called Taking My Life Back, and we are halfway through the series, which is exciting. We are on day 15 today, and so we have spent <clears throat> Uh, 14 days previously looking at ways for us to take our lives back. Since we talked about um, our soul being a treasure, what we understand is that um, it is very valuable. <clears throat> the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the enemy has come to siphon from you that which is a value. You. And he wants to get you to a corrupted place <clears throat> so that your soul ends up in hell with him. He wants to so ravish you that you uh, become angry with the king and you don't fight the correct enemy. See, when, when Satan presented himself through the serpent, right, he beguiled Eve, but he began to get her to accuse God. He began to get her to think and to question whether or not God was really who he said he was because was he really giving her the full picture? Was he really giving her the truth? And so she began to question God and come into agreement with Satan. And oftentimes there will be situations that present themselves before us that bring us into a state of questioning God and agreeing with Satan but as we have gone through this series and as we are going through this series um, we have been given weapons on how to shut certain things down because as warriors there are just certain things we have to shut down certain things we need to overthrow certain things we need to demolish and destroy leaving no evidence that they ever existed except for what was written about them, right? Um, we see this, that daddy God did that with the Amalekites. He blotted their name out from under the earth. And so, um, you know, we have the ability to do the same thing when we take our lives back, when we are aggressive with the aggressor. This series was birthed from a place of understanding that war happens. <clears throat> We're not in a physical war. We are in spiritual battles where we are uh, required to fire back. Because if we don't fire back, it will end what it is that God wants to see done in us and through us. The word of God tells us um, that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. 
uh, when violence comes against you, when the enemy comes to tell you, listen, I'm going to take your territory. I'm going to take your marriage. I'm going to take your children. I'm going to take your business. I'm going to take your finances. I'm going to take your trust in God. I'm going to um, take whatever it is that he's telling you he's going to take. It, it requires you to see, wait a minute, he just came against me violently. And it, it tells me in Matthew eleven twelve that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violent have to take it by force. So although violence has come against me, I have to engage violently, not in the natural, but spiritually, because the word tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And so um, when the enemy gets violent with you, you have to resort to violence, letting him know who you are in God. Because the word tells us that the kingdom of heaven is within, right? It, it says the kingdom of heaven is within. And since the kingdom of heaven is within, there is a war raging in you for what is yours. And we don't stand uh, for the violence of the enemy acquiring what is ours. He may have it momentarily, but we stand up and we say not forever, not so in the name of Jesus, because we have been called forth to take our lives back. We are on a mission of recovery. We are on a mission of restoration because on the cross, it was purchased for us. On the cross, it was made available to us and we have to enforce what is ours. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 the faith hall of fame lets us know about those who believed God so much so that they administered justice, conquered kingdoms, they shut the mouths of lions, they saw uh, promises come to pass uh, because of their level of belief and their will willingness to be enforcers of the edicts that God had released concerning them. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 through 12 says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time when we read this scripture what we notice is that overcame is in the past tense it doesn't say we overcome it says they overcame they took him out by doing these things right and we are going to take our lives back. We have to know that we've already overcame him. <clears throat> it's already been declared that you've overcame what has happened. You, it's already been decided. You're just walking out the manifestation of the thing. As those who belong to Jesus Christ, we cannot be afraid to violently reclaim what has already been claimed for us time to reclaim your time it's time to reclaim your family it's time to reclaim your finances it is time to reclaim your business it is time to reclaim whatever it is that the enemy came to claim as his own right there are are examples in the bible where people took stuff that was not theirs and then they wanted to pretend it was there was a story um, when, when King Solomon was ruling and a harlot came, um, there were two harlots in a house together and, um, you know, the one, they both had babies at the same time, around the same time, so their children were about the same age. Um, and one of the women 
rolled over on her baby and suffocated him in the night. And so because she had suffocated her child by rolling on top of him, she took the woman's child that was still living and traded her child for his, right? Uh, she, yeah, she traded children. And so, you know, the woman wakes up and she's like, oh my goodness, I have killed my baby. But then she looked at the baby and says, this baby is not my baby. This baby belongs to this lady over here. Let me go reclaim what's mine. Uh, but the woman wasn't willing to give up the son. And so they went before the king because they had an issue. They had a problem that needed to be worked out. And so they went before the king um, to work this particular issue out. And the king said, oh, I have the solution. Bring me a sword. Bring me a sword and we will divide this child. And, and the woman was like, listen, no, I'm going to need the child to survive. So let her have have this baby and the king said okay so now we know whose stuff it really is when the enemy comes to take your stuff what he wants to do is to destroy it he doesn't want to keep it intact he wants devastation and destruction to come against it but when you go before the king and you're like listen this is my stuff this belongs to me it is mine he will give you a strategy in order to be able to obtain what is yours oftentimes we don't look at the word of god as being full of strategies but the truth of the matter is it is the most strategic book on earth it is a, a book full of strategies and war tactics that will reverse every tactic of the, the enemy that has been sent against you and it is practical in nature and oftentimes we don't see the practicality behind the word of God therefore we don't properly apply the word of God therefore we are not getting the results of the word of God but the word of God of God will produce after its kind it will produce the results so if you see a result in the word of God that means it has been made available for you that means that it is a pattern for you to be able to model after in order to successfully obtain what is yours and and we are in day 15 we're going to be dealing with crushing excuse me crossing the crushing of courage day one we looked at dealing with rejection understanding that we need to begin to reject rejection because we are not a people who are rejected but we are accepted we looked day two at overcoming abandonment understanding that because we have been engraved on the very hand of our god we are not abandoned we looked at triumphing over trauma by processing victoriously with our king. Day four, we looked at dealing with the death and deceit, understanding that every deceptive tactic that is looking to enter into our lives has come tangled with death. But as those who are in the very life giver, we don't have to bow to death, but we cause death to bow to our God. Day five, we looked at managing the mess of mistakes, understanding that we can be our mistakes if we want to, but we don't have to be. We can rise up and displace what's looking to displace us. We looked on day six at throwing off the weight of worry, understanding that we could either worship God or worry. We could either worship God or worship Satan, but we can't do both. And then we looked at restraining the resistance of rebellion, understanding that we weren't created to resist God, to rebel against him, but we were created to submit to him, resist the devil so that he could flee from us we looked on day eight at standing against the state of stubbornness understanding that it is not cute to be stubborn in any way and that if we begin to identify the sinful tactics that are being used against us and the sin that we willingly engage in it will change how we win wars day nine we looked at waging war against the wickedness of witchcraft understanding that there have been some words that have enchanted you some words that you have released that have spellbound another and that if we are not careful with our words we will bind up the very things that that we need in order to be successful we will be enchanted and overcome by the words of darkness because we are not aware of the witchcraft that has been warred against us. Day 10, we looked at eliminating the ills of idolatry, understanding that we weren't created to bow down and worship anything in reverential awe aside from God. Day 11, we looked at leaving the lust of lies, understanding that lust will always lie to us. Desires that are perverted in nature will always bring us away from our intended purpose. Day 12, we looked at properly carrying the weight of a warrior, understanding that the weight that we carry as a warrior is in connection to God, not in our own strength, not in our own weightiness, but in the kabod, in the glory of God. Day 13, we looked at the fight of faith, understanding that the fiery... Um, 
um, darts that come came for your faith, that your trial is on faith. So you are fighting to demonstrate that you are a faith-filled one. Day 14, we looked at the guilt of grief, understanding that grief dis does not come with the loss of a person, but it comes with the loss of anything that we experience in our lives. And oftentimes we feel guilty for grieving or even not understanding that we have been in the grieving process. And today we are looking at crossing through the crushing of courage. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verse 7 in the KJV puts it this way, be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed, the king of Israel, um, excuse me, for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. Courage is defined as strength in the face of pain or grief. Pain and grief carry the ability to crush you if you are not mindful of how you should navigate those waters. When you are in God, pain and grief have no authority over you. As a blood-bought believer, you do not want to be crushed by the pain and grief that you are experiencing, but you do want to be crushed by courage. I know that you are probably thinking, no, I would rather not be crushed by anything. I understand why you would believe that being crushed by something would not benefit you. However, I want to present a different point of view. When olives are crushed, they produce a precious oil that has many uses. Olive oil is valuable and people pay for the oil that comes from the olive. Think of it this way. When you allow courage to place you into a press, it will produce something lovely out of you. I would not have considered myself a courageous person until I discovered that it took courage to transition from where I was in life to where God was calling me. As you engage with God concerning the shifts that he wants to make in your life and you say yes, you are operating from a place of courage. Every yes that you release crushes a mindset and attitude that you once carried and it allows the goodness of God to show up on your behalf. Courage will look different depending on each situation that you encounter and it has the ability to crush who you were so that God can produce the you that he intended for you to be. Courage helps to identify and remove the weakness that is looking to defeat you. Courage challenges you to believe God regardless of what you are looking at. Courage is necessary to walk in God, but you res excuse me, but you must remember never to draw your courage apart from God, but you always want your courage to come from a place that is centered in God. I'm going to pray the prayer starter and then I will pray as the Lord leads. Lord, we want to be courageous in you. We have looked for ways to be courageous in past seasons and they have all backfired on us. Lord, in this season, we are looking for a courage that lasts. We are looking for courage that bubbles up out of us because we are connected to you. Lord, we say no to false courage. We say no to false identity. Lord, we say no to the unrest that wants to take over when you have called us to a place of courage. Lord, we say yes to being led by your spirit. Lord, we say yes to holding on to the truth of who you are and who you have called us to be in you. Lord, we say we want more of you in everything that we do and we are willing to endure what it is is that we must be taken through in order to come out as you intended us to crush us and remake us in this season oh god crush us and remake us in this season so that we can have all that you have for us oh god oh god we are asking for the crushing to take place oh god we are crying out as those who understand the need to be crushed oh god we understand that if we are not crushed oh god we cannot arise properly oh god lord we want whatever is on the inside of us that is looking to manipulate us and bind us to be crushed out of us in the name of Jesus oh God Lord we thank you that you know how we take but we know how precious that oil is on the inside of us oh God we want the oil to flow oh God we want the oil to flow oh God we want the oil to flow oh God and anytime an oil flows 
will cost us something, oh God. And so we bless you for uh, uh, the price that we have had to pay, oh God. Because David put it this way, he would not give a sacrifice unto God that didn't cost him anything. Oh God, we are asking, oh Father God, that our obedience and our sacrifice would be pleasing in your sight. We are saying, oh God, the altars that we erect unto you, oh God, let them be a sweet savor in your nostrils, oh God. Lord, we are asking in the master name name of Jesus that every stumbling block, every hindrance, and everything that is looking to cause us to be wayward, oh God, we are looking for it to break in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we want to be courageous. And you told Joshua three times to be bold and courageous, to be bold and courageous, to be bold and courageous, oh God. And so we want to be a people who are bold and courageous. We want to be a people, oh Father God, who do not um, um, flail against the courage that is required in order to cross over to the other side it takes courage it takes boldness it takes our trust in you oh god and we need courage to fight these wars we need courage to take our lives back oh god the reason god told joshua to be strong and courageous right was because there would be many opportunities for him not to be there are many opportunities that present themselves in your life that say mm, courage just isn't it you can run and you can hide from this. You can bury your head in the sand. You can decide that this is just too much. You can decide that you want the easy way out. You can decide that you'd rather not be formed and fashioned in that way is your decision, right? But when you are courageous, what you say is, not my will, but thy will be done. It, it takes courage to acquiesce your will. It takes courage to say, wait a minute, this don't look good, but I know my God is good. I'm gonna say that again, that felt good to me. It takes courage to say, this does not look good, but I know that my God is good to me. And so whatever it costs me in the crushing process, I know he'll make up for it. See, when it says that it, it pleased God, to crush him talking about our savior it it pleased god to crush him and then he gave him a name that is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee bows and every tongue confesses that jesus christ is lord if god is the same god yesterday today and forevermore and he is if that be so then how do you think he will reward you for the crushing that you have had to experience? Oh God, help us to see that you still are the same God who rewards us, that you still are the same God who makes a way, that you still are the same God who sets us up for success, that you are still the same God who destroys our enemies, that you are still the same God who is waiting for our enemies to be made a footstool we put our feet upon their necks today oh god we say every enemy trying to tantalize us and entice us out of the place of being crushed by courage we say die now in the name of jesus we say we will not be bullied we say every bullying spirit every intimidation spirit every goliath spirit every son of belial we say hear the very voice of god you break in the name of jesus you lose your hole you will not lie and wait for us crouching like a, a, a lion looking to devour us but we say absolutely not because the lion of judah roars on our behalf the lion of judah has already gone before us the lion of judah has already made a way the lion of judah has already showed up on our behalf and we say because he has shown up as the the bright and morning star because he has shown up he will blind you in the name of jesus and so we thank you oh god that your light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not oh god that the very thing that we were afraid to be crushed by we willingly say crush us in the name of jesus oh god we say crush us that the oil would flow we say crush us that we will be made anew we say crush us that we will willingly move when you say move oh god we say crush us that we can stand oh god we we say crush us that we can run, oh God. We say crush us that we can soar, oh God. We say crush us that we can sing, oh God. We say crush us that we can dance, oh God. We say crush us that we can dream, oh God. We say crush us in the master name of Jesus, oh God. And those things that were demonically sent to crush us, we 
crush them by the crushing that you sent to crush us, O oh God. The word says that if they had known what they were doing when they crucified the Lord of glory, they would not have done it. Oh God, we are even now asking that the same way the enemy was dismayed when they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, let them be dismayed at us, O oh God. We are asking in the master name of Jesus that as we stand in the stead of Jesus Christ, O oh God, let our enemies be scattered this day. We say every running spirit that has gone ahead of us to run, to try to demolish our destinies. We call you forth to be summoned into the courts of heaven. And we say, answer the verdict in the name of Jesus. We say, let a guilty cause be rendered against them, O God. Let them be shackled and chained and let the enforcers of our covenant even now destroy them in the name of Jesus, O God. Well, we are asking, oh, Father God, that every enemy that has plotted against us, that has used our name in secret and has slandered us, oh, Father God, to get us out of the place to be courageous, oh, God. We say shut it down, oh, God. We say shut down their operations, oh, God, like businesses have been shut down. We say shut them down, oh, God. We say we will not be a people who are subject to darkness, oh, God, but we shut down their operations today by the authority of the Holy Ghost. We say oh God let our enemies be scattered oh God we say let those who come against us who plot against us oh father God let their wickedness come to naught oh God we say oh God you are mighty mighty and you are worthy to be praised for you sit high and you look low oh God heaven is your throne and earth is your footstool you truly are the ancient of days and aside from you there is no other we ask oh God that you be our rose of Sharon that you be the very lily of the valley that you are that you be our will in the middle of the wheel. Oh God, we ask, oh Father God, that just as you transfigure Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, let us be like that, oh God. We are asking for a total and complete transformation. We are asking for glory on our lives like never before. We are asking that as we be crushed in this place, oh God, that glory would make a sound, oh God. Lord, we thank you for every sound that glory is making in the spirit realm, oh God. We thank you for every thud that we hear, oh God, for every enemy that is falling, for every cry that is being released, oh God, because our enemies are being slayed, oh God, we thank you that as we agree to be crushed, oh God, that the kings that thought they were coming to make war against us as your kings are no longer operating, just as David slew Goliath. Let us um, um, slay every Goliath in our life and let the armies that come behind Goliath turn away and flee. Oh, we send them in flight, oh God. We send them in disarray. We disconfound them, oh Father God, that are looking to confine us by the dark judgments, oh God. We say every dark arrow that has come against us to poison our faith. We say absolutely not. Shields up this day, oh God. We thank you in the master name of Jesus for the ability to be a faith filled people. Anything that's looking to come against our faith and perverted, we say you are perverted. Therefore you die in the name of Jesus. We say we will not allow you to defile the very temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, let us be filled with your temple, oh God. Let us be transformed, refreshed, and, in, and invigorated on this morning, oh Father God. We even now ask for a cleanse in this place, oh God. Let your wind blow where we are, oh Father God. Let an uprooting and a tearing down take place. Let the purificating purifying fire fall upon us, oh God, and burn up every ounce of chaff that is within us. Oh God, we are asking in the master name of Jesus that we would be a sweet savor in your nostrils, oh Father God. Let us have a fragrant oil before you like the oil that came out of the alabaster box of Mary, oh Father God. We are asking, let our smell be distinct and unique, oh Father God, that it would draw what is uh, of a resource to us and it will repair what would be detrimental, oh God. We are asking in the name of Jesus, oh God, that what is of value and what is of treasure concerning us, oh God, that we would receive it in the name of Jesus. And anything that is looking to trample over the treasures that you have given us, oh God, we shut it down. Every Judas spirit that is looking to cause confusion in the camp, 
oh God, and, and to look at us as if our behavior before you is not proper. We shut it down in the name of Jesus, oh God. We say every murmuring and complaining spirit against the way we are worshiping our God, let it die in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we are asking asking, oh God, that the crushing of the courage make us new, oh God. Lord, that we come forth as the goal that you intended for us to be. Remove the dross, oh God. Remove the dross, oh God. Remove the dross in the master name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we thank you for clearing the way, oh God. We thank you for the wrecking ball of the Holy Ghost, wrecking everything that's looking to wreck us, oh God. We call for, for Holy Ghost excavators in this season, oh God, to uh, uh, uproot and unbury everything that has been burrowing against us, against our roots, oh God. Coming against our foundations. We terminate every termite in the name of Jesus, oh God. We say every rodent and every pest that has come against us die in the name of Jesus. We even now declare and decree pesticide against our enemy, oh God. Lord, we thank you in the master name of Jesus that we can stand up as those who belong to our God and who believe our King. We say, oh God, have your way on the inside of us. We say, oh God, strengthen us and encourage us in this place. We thank you for every angel that is ministering unto your people, oh Father God, and we thank you that we change our minds on this morning. If you came in here with the mindset that was defeated, crush it in the name of Jesus. If you came in here with the mindset that said, you you can't make it. Crush it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we are asking for the very thing that is looking to utilize us as an outlet. We destroy you in the name of Jesus. We will not be the outlet for defeat. We will not be the outlet uh, uh, for disgrace. We will not be the outlet for shame in the name of Jesus. We say not so. Our God is not disgraced. Our God is not shamed. Our God is not put in disarray. Therefore, we ourselves, if they can't do it to Jesus Christ, they can't do it to you. In the name of Jesus, we rise up and we say not so because he is the reigning king. He is the ruling king. He is the undefeated, undisputed reigning champion of the world. And since he is a champion, we are a champion. It says that if we are willing to suffer with him, we can reign with him. And in our suffering, what we do is we have a level of connection with him under understanding that when he came here he, he lived suffered and died on our behalf he did it so that we could suffer freely free will offering we could freely give our lives in the suffering knowing that the suffering would bring glory to the king and so oh god we are asking that as we are being crushed and changed that we would be renewed that we would see um um what what the crushing is doing to us oh god and we would appreciate it in the name of jesus let our attitudes be changed let our belief systems be revealed oh god <clears throat> let us be a people who become clear on the direction that you want to take us in oh god i shut down every ounce of confusion in the name of jesus i sit on you in the name of jesus i sit on you and i cut off your flow of oxygen i even now put my foot upon your neck and i disrobe you i remove your crown i remove your rings i remove your sword i remove your shoes i shut down your armor bearer in the name of jesus and i say any ambush that you have set against us be destroyed we thank you oh god that we are a warring people we thank you oh god that we are not a fear filled people we thank you oh god that we are a people who use the weapons of our warfare well oh god we thank you for downloading strategies and uh, architectural designs and plans oh god lord we thank you for building permits in the spirit realm oh father god lord we thank you for maps and, and distinctions oh god lord we thank you for um correct borders and boundaries oh god lord we thank you for clarity and for peace of mind oh god lord we thank you oh god for leveling demonic cities in the name of jesus for shutting down demonic infrastructures oh god and for raising us up as those who occupy until you come it is our profession to profess your grace oh god and so we thank you in the master name of jesus that we are professionals in your kingdom oh god that we will elaborate on your glory and your goodness oh god that we would testify oh father god to how you have done great things for us oh god we thank you for strength oh god we thank you for strength oh god we thank you that the weak say i am strong oh god lord we thank you in the name of jesus just for the ability to praise you oh god that praise will be upon our lips oh god that praise will be upon our hearts oh god that praise will be in our hands oh god that praise will be on our 
minds, oh God, that praise will be in our eyes, oh God, that we would envision ourselves worshiping you before the throne, oh God, that we would envision ourselves, oh God, of being at your at your feet, oh God, that we would be a people who partake in what it is that you have called us to, oh God. We push back darkness. We push back anything that's looking to push us back. We even now loose the very sword of the Lord against our enemies, oh God. We say every locust, every canker worm, every caterpillar, everything that has come against us, we are reclaiming our stuff on today. We declare and decree that though we have wanted to get out of the place of crushing, we reinstate our ability to be crushed by our God. We say our God is effective in the crushing process. And since he is effective at what he does, we will allow ourselves to be crushed. We thank you for demolishing every thought that would tell us to get out of the place of crushing. We say you will not block our our blessings in the name of Jesus. You say, we say we will not be hindered from being formed by our God. We know that he knows how to put his finger right where it needs to be. And so we thank you for the press, oh God. We thank you for the renewal. We thank you for the shaking. We thank you for the beating, oh God. And we thank you for our oil that is flowing, that it doesn't stop in the name of Jesus. When the when the widow at Zarephath was told, or no, excuse me, it was not the widow at Zarephath. It was a widow of them. So the widow came to Elisha the prophet, and she said, "The sons of the prophet uh, is dead. You know that he feared the Lord, and now um, we are in great debt, and the debtors are coming to get um, my two sons because they were coming to get them in order to pay off the debt." And the prophet said, "Well, what do you have in your house?" And she said, I, I just have a little cruise of oil. And he said, okay, go to your neighbors and, and borrow many vessels and shut yourself up in the house and, and pour. Don't stop. Pour. So she had her and her sons and they went about and they collected all of these vessels and they began to pour. And as they poured, the vessels were filled and the vessels were filled one after another. And they did not stop filling vessels until they ran out of them. The oil did not stop flowing until there was no place to put it, right? And so as people of purpose, as people who are taking our lives back, as people who were meant to have oil flow from us, your oil will only stop flowing if you decide that it's going to stop. If you don't have a place to put it, but God always gives us the vessels that need what it is that we have. But if we remain as a container who wants to contain it instead of releasing it, we won't move on to where we need to be as a person who is being crushed by the processes as a person who is going through the courage process it's important for you to be willing to allow that oil to flow because sometimes we see the oil flowing and we get a little nervous and we're like wait a minute what is that i've never seen that before but that is necessary that is the marking that god is leaving through you you in the earth realm and so oh god we will not be afraid of the oil that is flowing we won't try to prematurely stop it oh god but we will allow ourselves to be shut up in the secret place oh god and we will allow you to send us the vessels oh god we will allow you to create the atmosphere we will allow you to call us into those places oh god where our oil will flow we bless you oh god for what you're doing on the inside of us and for what is yet to come in jesus mighty name amen Listen, I pray that this um, prayer has blessed you on this morning. If you are on the Facebook and you have a prayer request or a praise report, go ahead, send it to me. I would love to pray with you. I would love to rejoice with you. If you have not gotten your Taking My Life Back ebook, you want to get it today. It is an immediate download. You can go back and pray through the, the 15 days that we have. You can uh, create a lesson plan between you and God where you are allowing him to facilitate your growth um, you can uh, uh, do some mighty things with that ebook and so go ahead and get your copy of taking my life back today and use it in the name of Jesus um, you don't just want to put it on the shelf but you want to utilize it effectively um, and I'm excited today I meet with my leaders and leaders souls so i'm excited about seeing them there if you want to join leader souls if you like i am a leader and i want to be a part of your community go ahead click the link on the facebook video and join you can join us today we are in um an amazing training and processing and so i'm excited about that so you can join in today if you are on the clubhouse um you can go to my website or 
to my Instagram and sign up today to join and become a part of that as well. Um, but if you don't have any prayer requests or praise reports on the Facebook, I will see you soon. If you are on the good YouTube, go ahead and um, there is a uh, uh, description in the video on the YouTube so you can click that as well in order to sign up for Leaders Souls. Okay, um, uh, Clubhouse. Go ahead, raise your hand if you have a prayer request or a praise report. I will be back, not tomorrow, because tomorrow is Saturday, so I won't be back. <laughs> but I'll be back Monday morning at the good 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to continue as uh, we have been going through uh, taking my life back. And let us see what we will be dealing with on Monday. The battle of boldness. The battle of boldness. So come bring a friend with you as we battle for the boldness of the lord because we don't want to be bold in hell no 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 we want to be bold in our king king jesus and so um join me monday morning 8 a.m eastern standard time i will see you then bye